Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. The remains of a child were found in the area. Police have been searching for a missing four year old, Athena Brownfield. You see her little face right here behind me. Now, the heartbreaking discovery happened yesterday just southwest of Oklahoma City. It's a story we've been following since the little girl was reported missing last week. Court documents released on Tuesday say Athena died on Christmas. They also revealed she was beaten to death by her caregiver and then buried. Right now, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation isn't able to confirm if the remains are officially Athena's. This as the state medical examiner works to identify the body. Now, Athena, though, was discovered as missing when a postal worker found her five year old sibling wandering alone outside. The child's caregivers are both behind bars. Yvonne Adams being held at the Arizona jail awaiting a trip back to Oklahoma where he's facing first degree murder charges. Alicia Adams is charged with child neglect in Athena's death. She is being held in Oklahoma. All right, before we get to other top news where you live, let's get a check of the weather with meteorologist Zach Scott. Hey, Zach. Hey, Joe. Soggy start to the day, that's for sure. Even stormy at times with thunderstorms mixing in. We continue to track that rain chance for you for the first half of your Wednesday. Definitely the best chance for rain is going to be through the morning hours. Now, as we get into the early afternoon, that clearing line is pushing into eastern Oklahoma. And we're going to continue to track it out as we go through the early and mid-afternoon hours by 3 o'clock. We're looking at clouds really giving way to plenty of sunshine, especially the further west you are. And then we're looking for dry conditions for all by 3 o'clock and the rain and storm spreading off towards the east. We'll be clear and chilly as we go overnight into tomorrow. With the sunshine in the afternoon and a southwest wind, that's a warmer wind force coming in about 10 to 20 miles per hour. That's going to try to boost temperatures up into the 60s. Again, as sooner the, the quicker we can get some sunshine, the sooner we're going to see those temperatures warming to more comfortable 60s. Expect chilly 50s and rain cold 50s for you as you get your day going. All right, we'll even try to top out in the upper 60s in parts of the River Valley. Again, a likelihood of showers for the first half of the day, drier conditions for the afternoon into the evening, clear and cold as we go overnight, temperatures into the 30s, and we'll even have a northwest wind early tomorrow morning, already about 10 to 20 miles per hour, giving us wind chills in the 20s, maybe even a few teens for parts of northwest Arkansas. And then the rest of the work week through the weekend, overall cool Cooler pattern setting in upper 40s, low 50s for northwest Arkansas expected the River Valley. Not much better, but a little bit. We're anticipating mostly lower 50s. We'll continue to track the chillier weather likely for us as we go through the next couple weeks. All right, thanks so much, Zach. Well, for the first time ever, those wanting to go to vet school in Arkansas may soon get the chance. Every year, students leave the state to train in this profession since Arkansas doesn't have a veterinarian school. But late yesterday, Arkansas State University in Jonesboro announced they'll spend $15 million to open a college of veterinary medicine. The date of opening, though, has not been announced. Last year, Lyon College in Batesville announced they are in the process of forming a vet school. But according to their website, fundraising is still underway. And the live mascot of the University of Arkansas, Tusk 5, has passed away. Tusk 5 died of natural causes on Sunday at his home in Dardanelle. He was four years old and served as the official live mascot of the Razorbacks from 2019 to 2022. Now he took over for his father, Tusk 4, who retired in 2019. He will be succeeded by his brother, Tusk 6, in the continuation of the live mascot program at the U of A. And to help meet the need of people struggling with addiction, the Salvation Army has expanded its rehabilitation facility in Fayetteville, renovating an existing building. Building, it was able to add 10 beds, now making room for 26 men in the program at a time. This also means there will now be more room for people needing shelter since the rehab will no longer have to share space. Right now, the program graduates 20 men a year on average, but it's hoping to grow that number. Director of the Drug and Alcohol Program, Brandon Smith, says five years sober and says this program saved his life. I've poured my whole life into this place and helping other people and what was so freely given to me, I just want to give it back to people and show them how it's done and show them how I did it. And it's not that I'm anything special or I did anything special. I, I did what I was asked to do and I followed certain instructions. Well, those needing treatment can get it for free through the program. Just check this story out at FindNewsOnline.com. We also have a link to ways you can help the organization with the mission.
And new Washington County Judge Patrick Deakins wants a new seal for the county. Deakins says it would symbolize collaboration of the county's municipalities, but one justice of the peace has concerns about the symbol. Five News reporter Jose Carranza shows us what's being proposed. The seal has not been revised since 1982. On this week's agenda, a new Washington County seal is being proposed by County Judge Patrick Deakins. We haven't touched uh, the foundation, I would say, of that seal. We're just adding and supplementing a component with the ring of stars around that original seal so that we're both, in my mind, honoring our history, but also looking forward to the future and the collaboration that we can have with our municipalities. The new seal would add 13 stars for each of the incorporated municipalities in the county. People see in symbols what they want to see in symbols. Suki Hires is the Justice of the Peace for District 11. Her concern is the proposed 13 stars for the 13 cities would be too similar to the 13 stars on many far-right group symbols. Some people are going to see um, a symbology that has been used by Patriot Front, um, by the three percenters, and um, that can get in the way of that spirit of togetherness that he's wanting to bring with those 13 stars together. It by no means has no connection to any other groups other than to represent the 13 cities within our county and to build on that collaboration. Unfortunately and ironically, a lot of times in politics we get caught in these partisan ruts. But it's now up to the quorum court to decide. I would like for us to just table this and really tackle some business um, within Washington County. In Washington County, covering news where we live, Jose Carranza, 5 News. Well, tomorrow the quorum court will be meeting for the first time in 2023. Included in the agenda is the seal ordinance. Six new justice of the peace will be joining the court. J.P. Hires says it could be more of an organizational meeting, though. The meeting will start at 6 at the county courthouse. Well, those are some of your top stories on this Wednesday. Make sure to catch up with us again tomorrow right here for more. I'm Joe Ellison. Have a great day.